With humanity at a crossroads, we wonder whether we'll plunge into devastation or take flight and soar. As our hearts yearn to know our destiny, we turn to the clues and messages left by seers, saints, and prophets of the past. In Divine Guidance, let's explore their visions and predictions that can help us navigate today's troubled waters and reach the shore of a better, brighter tomorrow. In previous episodes, we examined the Seven Fires prophecy of the Anishinabe. During the Seventh Fire, which is believed to be the current time period, the prophecy speaks of a new people emerging on our planet who are here to ignite the eighth and final fire, a golden age. In the name of the Seventh Fire, a Oshkibimadizig, new people, will emerge. They will retrace their steps to find what was left by the trail. Their steps will take them to the elders, who they will ask to guide them on their journey. The task of the new people will not be easy. If the new people will remain strong in their quest, the water drum of the Medeowin Lodge will again sound its voice. There will be a rebirth of the Anishinaabe nation and a rekindling of old flames. The sacred fire will again be lit. It is at this time that the light-skinned race will be given a choice between two roads. If they choose the right road, then the seventh fire will light the eighth and final fire, an eternal fire of peace, love, brotherhood, and sisterhood. Who are the new people of the seventh fire? We may gain insights from another First Nations prophecy passed down for hundreds of years, the prophecy of the Rainbow Warriors. The Honorable Chief Standing Bear of the Ponca First Nation is known as a hero of Native American civil rights for testifying in an 1879 federal court case establishing that indigenous citizens have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. He stated, Our ancient prophecies say a time will come when the blue sky and waters turn black and green things turn brown and die. Great leaders, warriors, and shamans of many nations will be born to be pathfinders, and they will cleanse the earth for rebirth. They will be called Rainbow Warriors, for they will bring together the four races of man to live in peace. The Honorable Chief Seattle of the Suquamish and Duwamish First Nations, an advocate of ecological responsibility and Native American land rights for whom the city of Seattle, Washington is named, made this prophetic statement around 1854. When the earth is sick, the animals will begin to disappear. When that happens, the warriors of the rainbow will come to save them. The Navajo First Nation shares a similar testament called the Prophecy of the Whirling Rainbow. There will come a day when people of all races, colors, and creeds will put aside their differences. They will come together in love, joining hands in unification to heal the earth and all her children. They will move over the earth like a great whirling rainbow, bringing peace, understanding, and healing everywhere they go. The Hopi First Nation, one of the oldest living cultures in history, also speaks of the Rainbow Warrior prophecy. When the earth is ravaged and the animals are dying, a new tribe of people shall come unto the earth from many colors, creeds, and classes, and who by their actions and deeds shall make the earth green again. They shall be known as the Warriors of the Rainbow.
a female elder named Eyes of Fire from the Cree First Nation in present-day Canada, also revealed her vision of the Rainbow Warriors. The day will come when some people will awaken from their lethargy to forge a new world of justice, peace, liberty, and respect for the Great Spirit. The Rainbow Warriors will carry and transmit the values of this new world. They will teach the rest of the children of the Earth how the Great Spirit lives and show them how this world has moved away from the Great Spirit and how for that reason humanity and Earth are falling ill. The principles of these teachings will be the same ones that the original communities and First Peoples lived by. While each First Nation has its own distinct culture, identity, and spiritual belief, the same fundamental way of life is shared across many, if not all, of the First Nations. Indigenous citizens were taught by their elders to have a profound respect for the Great Spirit or the Creator and to live harmoniously with Mother Earth and all of God's creation. This is reflected in how they give thanks to the Great Spirit, Mother Earth, and all of her creation in their everyday lives through prayer, songs, stories, dances, festivals, and ceremonies. As the Earth faces the imminent danger of extinction due to global warming and other crises that can be traced back to humanity's relentless cruel treatment of nature and animal people, a group of courageous individuals is rising up to help humanity reconnect with the Great Spirit. Going against the current mainstream trends, these trailblazers are working to reawaken others to the fact that we're all part of one family and are calling for an end to humans' most violent and abusive practices toward our animal people co-citizens, Mother Earth and one another. These are the prophesied new people or rainbow warriors. Rainbow warriors come in many forms, and one of these is vegan activists who speak out against animal people exploitation. Today we're having a nationwide animal rights march in South India. So I'm vegan because I believe that every animal should have rights. Yeah. 
use love and compassion as our guiding principles, we can create, develop, and implement systems of change that are beneficial to all sentient beings and to the environment, etc. Rainbow Warriors are also the activists who champion for the lives of the unborn. is what the pro-life movement looks like at its strongest in the United States today. We're at the March for Life, and what you see behind me goes on for miles. In 2020, His Excellency Donald Trump became the first president in U.S. history to attend the March for Life, the largest annual pro-life rally in the country. Mr. Trump is a laureate of a Shining World Peace Leader Award and a Shining World Leadership Award for Compassion. It is my profound honor to be the first president in history to attend the March for Life. We're here for a very simple reason, to defend the right of every child, born and unborn, to fulfill their God-given potential. Etc. Other rainbow warriors are those who demonstrate and demand immediate action to mitigate climate change and global warming. I became vegan because I watched some documentaries, I did my research, I read the papers, and I learned how bad eating meat and animal products is for our environment, how much greenhouse gases they emit. I, I originally became vegan because of the massive amount of greenhouse gas emissions that the animal agriculture industry produces yeah. every year, along with you know my own desire to end animal cruelty. etc. Rainbow Warriors also call for peace among all nations to stop war on our planet. etc. Many Native American citizens and other organizations are teaching children the ancient practices of the First Nations and preparing them to be the Rainbow Warriors of tomorrow. There's something with the earth that's changing. I knew that years ago because I was told that it was coming. What can we do so that our people can survive? So we decided touch the earth, touch the trees learn our language, learn how to gather food, learn how to grow food so that we can survive too, see? So that's why we're doing these things with the children because when those Head Start children become Akawenzi, that's the elder. 
I don't know what to do. Who's willing to be a rainbow warrior going forward? I'd like to be a rainbow warrior. I'd like to be a rainbow warrior. I'm 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 a rainbow warrior.